I bet you don't know what this is. And if you do know what it is, you don't know what it's for. And if you do know what it's for, well, you're some sort of bat crazy person with cats. So let me describe. There's an orange on off switch, a headphone socket, a mini jack audio in socket, four indicator LEDs. Anything? Okay, a gain switch, a bass switch, and a rotary volume control that, who knows, might even be analog. There's a USB C socket which, unless there's something that isn't in the manual, is only used for charging. We know, therefore, that it's something that you use for audio. But what? Clearly, as an older person, I'm going to have no idea myself. But I showed it to a much younger person, an actual young person. No idea either. Well, having explored the device, perused the manual, checked the marketing materials, I now know exactly what this gadget is. The trouble is, though, I don't know what anyone would use it for. Or at least I didn't when I first got hold of it. That's enough teasing. I'm going to tell you exactly what the Fozzy Audio N3 is right now. I'll also tell you what you might want to use it for. But firstly, what you might not. The Fozzy Audio N3 is a Bluetooth audio receiver. Or as Fozzy puts it, a Bluetooth headphone amplifier. Aha, Bluetooth. My thinking goes, or at least it went, Bluetooth is what you'd use to get audio from your phone into your wireless headphones. OK, Bluetooth has many other uses, but for audio, I'd think that wireless headphones would be its best use. I'm a bit of a fan of wireless headphones in the sense that when I use my cabled headphones out and about, the cable is my major source of strife. Ideally, I'd have a pair of headphones with a short cable just long enough to reach my pocket. But come on, my headphones cost me 200 quid second hand. I'm not going to be cutting them up. I keep them tidy with a releasable cable tie. But they are my favourite headphones. I doubt whether I'd find a pair of wireless headphones that I'd like as much. Probably even at a much higher price point. And then there's the hassle of keeping them charged. I know, I wouldn't be very good at that. But in principle, wireless headphones are a good thing to exist in the universe. So, from my somewhat less than current iPhone 11, Pro Max, I could Bluetooth into a pair of wireless headphones. Or I could stick with my wired headphones, except that my phone doesn't have an audio output. A mini jack. No mini jack. Fortunately, Apple sells what they call an adapter. But apparently it isn't a mere adapter. It's a DAC, a digital to analog converter. And more besides that we don't need right now. All we need to know is that it's a DAC. It takes a digital signal from your phone and converts it to analog for your wired headphones. And it costs nine quid. Can you believe that? An Apple product that costs just nine great British pounds. Apart from the cable hassle then, my phone works fine with my cabled headphones. I don't need Bluetooth. So this is where I'm coming from. I have an adapter, a DAC. I don't need Bluetooth. If I didn't have cabled headphones, I'd have wireless headphones with Bluetooth. So why would I need a Bluetooth audio receiver? This is the point where I ask commenters whether you would have a use for a Bluetooth audio receiver in the context of your phone or tablet and your headphones, or any context at all. So I had to investigate further. Amazon seemed a good place to go. And wow, there's a whole load of Bluetooth audio receivers. Well, actually, a whole load of Bluetooth audio transmitters and just a few receivers. Anyway, if Amazon sells them, they must be popular. Looking at the marketing for various products, it seems the common denominator is getting audio from a device that has a Bluetooth output into your traditional analog non-Bluetooth hi-fi. So yes, I get this. I could just as easily use my DAC, but you could well be using some gadget with Bluetooth that doesn't have a compatible DAC. So I could, for instance, set up my hi-fi with the Fozzy Audio N3, so it's set up ready for me to play audio from my phone without having to connect anything or find my DAC. I can tell you, finding the DAC is the worst part. The N3 will, by the way, work with the charging cable plugged in. I know from experience that not all devices are like that. Another use I can imagine would be to connect your mini jackless phone to your car's audio system, presuming it has an aux input. Presuming also that it's pretty ancient and that's the only way you can connect. My car, if you can believe this, has an adapter with an Apple 30 pin connector. <laughs> Oddly enough, it works and I can control my iPod, if you can remember those, from the steering column. I don't bother. 
I listen to the radio. Yet another use might be to take advantage of the N3's mini jack audio input. I'm guessing you might use this if you have a low level signal that needs a bit of boost. So at this point, I'll ask you if you had a fuzzy audio N3 or any similar Bluetooth audio receiver, what would you use it for? That's enough talking. Well, nearly enough. You want to know what the fuzzy audio N3 sounds like. I mean, actually sounds like with actual sound. I could run through the specs, but this would be where my viewer numbers fall off a cliff. So let's get into some real audio. What I have here is an original analog recording, one of my doodles from 40 something years ago, but recorded using Neve and Studer equipment. So the equipment is better than me. I have a wave version of this recording. I've transferred it to my phone and played it through my adapter, my DAC, into my digital audio workstation software. And I've also played it via Bluetooth using the Fuzzy Audio N3. I'll play it through and switch between the three versions. Can you hear any difference? <laughs> any difference that would make a difference in practice? I'll leave that up to you. My own test, however, was to take a coach trip to London, which is something I do often with my phone, adapter and cabled headphones. But I used the fuzzy all the way there and all the way back. For practical purposes, my enjoyment of music from Spotify was as good with the fuzzy as with the adapter. Curiously, I didn't find the extra box any more inconvenient than the adapter. I can't really explain that, but it wasn't any more bother other than having to consider whether it was charged or not. I found the volume adequate, and there's a switch for extra gain if you need it. I didn't expect the bass boost to do anything useful for me, but it would be useful if, for instance, I might be using over-the-ear earbuds, which I might if I don't want to be carrying the bulk of my huge headphones. I don't have any conclusions to this review, and I'm sure you can reach your own. The Fuzzy Audio N3 is a Bluetooth audio receiver, headphone amplifier. It works. I can't find any fault with it other than I don't, personally, really have a use for it. Would you use a Bluetooth audio receiver? Tell us what for in the comments. See you soon. Hi, I'm Phil, Audio Phil. This device makes my blood run cold. There's no tracking force or bias to adjust. I can't find a mini jack cable that comes anywhere near my thousand dollar budget. And if there are no speaker cables to lift, how am I going to get the highly resolving sound that I need?